Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be talking about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Manchester United tactical setup for the 21 22 Premier League season. Remember to subscribe if you're new, smash that like button, and come check us out on Twitch, where we'll be streaming Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. throughout the season. But anyway, let's get this party started. The summer of 2021 has seen Manchester United take more steps forward under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, addressing some problem positions and giving opportunities to squad players to impress. So today we're going to explain how Manchester United could look this season. In terms of starting formation, I expect Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to continue with the 4-2-3-1. For all the quotes about switching to more of a single pivot, it doesn't make sense with the current United squad. Bruno Fernandes has been a revelation since signing for United. In fact, during Solskjaer's time as United manager, Bruno ranks first for final third passes, passes into the box, chances created, big chances created, expected assists, real assists, and he's the second top goal scorer. He's put all these ridiculous numbers from playing in a number 10 position, where he's given the freedom to operate as a second striker, at times in the striker position. Take his goal against Leicester City, Maguire in possession. He passes it to Bay, who carries forward and plays it into the feet of Cavani. The striker turns, slips in Bruno, who finishes across the goalkeeper. But if we take that back, you see the position that Fernandez takes up. At the start of the move, you see United's 3-3-4 attacking structure, which allows Bruno to play on the last line. If United played a 4-3-3, you'd likely see Bruno a lot deeper on the midfield line, where he'd be unable to make use of his excellent off-the-ball movement. Fortunately, Solskjaer continued with Bruno at 10, which allowed United to score. But he doesn't just score goals from these higher positions, but frequently interchanges positions within the front four, allowing United to be far more unpredictable in the final third. Take his assist in the 3-1 win over Everton. Wambasaka in possession. Before the play unfolds, you can already see the rotation, as Martial playing up front has dropped into number 10. Rashford has taken up the striking position, and Bruno is holding the width on the left. When Masaka drives inside and passes it to Fred, Fred takes one touch, breaks the lines with a pass into the feet of Rashford. Rashford turns, plays it wide to Bruno, who controls, ships it back, and crosses it to Rashford, which ultimately finds the far post. Again, if Bruno was deeper, he wouldn't be able to affect the game in the same way. When Wambasaka plays it to Fred, Bruno makes a dart in behind Coleman, taking the fullback's attention and stopping him from stepping out onto Rashford, which creates the pocket of space. Then he is high enough up the pitch to combine with Rashford and put United into the lead. Obviously, if you shifted Bruno Fernandes to left central midfield, you'd still get some of this output, but you'd be limiting his involvement to half a pitch. Whilst we've not seen too many assists from the right-hand side in a United shirt, this is much more down to United's focus on the left wing, not Bruno's inability to create from that side. For Sporting, he created a number of goals from crossing from the position on the right. With Jadon Sancho on that right-hand side, with a very much a demand for the ball into his feet, we could see that a lot more from Bruno Fernandes. Continuing in the 4-2-3-1 will allow Bruno to continue his free role where he terrorised the Premier League. That being said, formations in the modern game are somewhat arbitrary, with teams taking up a variety of different formations depending on the game state. Most teams at least have an attacking structure and a defensive shape, but you could dig deeper into those to find a shape to build up and a shape to create chances from. So the starting formation isn't particularly important. It's just the easiest way to illustrate a starting 11. What we've seen from Solskjaer in pre-season is more adventurous pairing in the double pivot often with a more creative player like Paul Pogba or Donny van der Beek, playing next to a more conservative midfielder like Fred McTominay or Matic. This combination offers more attacking threat without completely changing the system that Solskjaer and the players have been working on for the past couple of seasons. How the midfield operates will be tactically very interesting this season, and will be part of the team that will see the most changes. For the most part, the other nine positions are largely locked down, with perhaps the goalkeeper and striker position the only two where you can see genuine competition for the best 11. But I expect the double pivot to be constantly adapted to fit the situation. Donny van der Beek is the player that will benefit the most from the uncertainty and Solskjaer's more attacking approach. The Dutchman struggled for minutes last season because he was competing with Bruno Fernandes, the best number 10 in the world for Solskjaer's system. But he should get more opportunities to impress this time round. Donny has been working hard on his physicality in the off season, trying to add muscle to help him cope with the demands of the Premier League. Combine this with a full season of experience and a pre-season to impress and Donny could be a real difference maker. A player who thrives on short, quick passing 
Van der Beek is a safe option in possession. When he's been in the double pivot and United have built out from the back, Donny has always made himself available as a passing option. And if he receives, he usually moves it on with one touch. This will not only help United retain possession when they're being pressed, but it'll help to move the opposition around, creating gaps for United to progress through. But he's not just a facilitator. Van der Beek is a good passer. He's always looking for ways to progress the ball. So whilst it might play a safe pass with his back to goal, he's always got that pass around the corner to kickstart an attack. His defensive awareness needs improving, and I wouldn't expect him to start the big games in a pivot, but against teams that deploy a, a deep block, maybe a 4-4-2, his skill set could be invaluable. Incredibly press resistant, Van der Beek and Matic could form Oli's go-to pairing against defensive opponents, whereas in the bigger games, I expect McFred to return that ball-winning goodness. But other than that composition of the midfield, I expect a similar approach to last season. The new signings, Rafael Varane and Jadon Sancho, whilst both being world-class, they'll improve the starting 11. They shouldn't really change the way, though, that Oli's got United playing. The duo is simply an improvement of what Solskjaer had last season. Varane offers extra quality on the ball, especially with his long passing, but first and foremost, he'll tighten up the defence. Sancho, meanwhile, will offer natural width out wide and will create a large volume of high-quality chances. With a fully fit squad, I expect we'll see the left and right wing occupied by Marcus Rashford and Jadon Sancho, respectively, although they'll freely rotate positions. Tactically, United will continue to attack in their 3-3-4, focusing their play out wide. With this duo on the pitch, United's attack should be far more balanced with more play coming down the right wing, although the left may still be favoured due to the attacking output of Luke Shaw. We should see the same as last season, building up from the back, looking for space for the forwards to operate in. If the direct balls aren't on, they'll continue the attacks through the wide areas and should frequently see options to switch the point of attack. And this aspect of United's play will be much improved with the new signing, given Varane's exceptional long passing and the two incredibly effective wingers in 1v1 situations. What's also noticeable in pre-season is the improvement of playing in between the lines. Last season, the 3-3-4 uh, could see a large gap between the midfield and the attack. But in pre-season, we've seen a lot more movement off the line. Combine this with the extra progression in the pivot, and United will be a lot more smoother in possession. Bruno's chance in the 18th minute against Everton highlights this. Matic in possession halfway. He carries it and plays it wide to Greenwood. United work it back to Matic, who escapes the pressure and plays it inside to Van der Beek. Donny then calmly breaks Everton's midfield line with a pass into Bruno Fernandes, who's able to turn, creating a 5 on 4 in United's favour. Bruno then carries, plays a 1 2 with Mason Greenwood, and puts too much on his shot. But this is a lovely move from United and could be even better with the new boys. If we take it back to Bruno receiving and Sancho is playing wide right, uh, when the winger receives the pass wide from Bruno, there's an opportunity to beat Dean in a 1v1 situation, either get a low cross to the back post or pick out Bruno in more space with a cutback. This season is genuinely exciting one for Manchester United fans. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is consistently moving the club forward towards a complete system that he built at the club. His signings have largely been players who've been brought in to play a predetermined role. His tactics and style of play from last season will remain wing play and attack, and adopting a pragmatic counter-attack in defence. His signings will improve both sides of United's game, and they'll also improve the squad depth. Solskjaer now has options to play in every position. Ignoring the younger players, United could field two 11s of genuine Premier League quality. And if there's going to be any hope of silverware, this squad will need to be used. One player that could make a massive difference is Diogo Delo. After a decent loan spell at AC Milan last season, Delo's return could see a transfer focus shifted from right back to defensive midfield. A player of immense potential, Delo is a very different option to Aaron Wambasaka and could allow the 1v1 specialist to have a rest here and there. Delo could also be introduced to add more attacking option if United need the goal. All in all, the 21-22 season will be a very interesting one as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer looks for his first trophy as Manchester United manager. But anyway guys, what do you think? How do you see United playing this season and will they win any silverware? Get into the comments below. I've been Satman Dave, subscribe if you're new. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?